morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Naomi Hunt. And I'm Joseph Bianchini. Tiger tutoring will not be available March 16th, 17th or at any point during spring break. The biomed course at RHS has undergone changes in order to stay in line with COVID protocols. We go to Meyer Berman to take a closer look. Principles of Biomedical Science, an introductory class to the exciting and intriguing field of biomedical science offered at Roseville. The CTE course has been here for six years, however, it has undergone some changes in its curriculum due to the pandemic. Catherine Nurse, a teacher at RHS who teaches the Principles of Biomedical Science class, offers some insight into what kind of changes there have been. According to Nurse, some of the topics that we have focused on extensively last year are touched on more briefly this year, allowing us to cover more concepts that are a bit more relevant to the biomedical field. Overall, I do think that the changes are an improvement for the course. Um, they have condensed the curriculum from six units previously to four units, and it seems to be that they've kind of taken the um, extensive focus off of some concepts. We still look at concepts, we just don't look at them for as long of a period of time. The COVID-19 pandemic most severely affects students who have been and are continuing to learn through Zoom. This is largely because they do not get the full experience of completing the fun lab work associated with many of the lessons. Additionally, according to Nurse, the EOC, or end of course exam, has not changed much this year, aside from accommodating to virtual learning. We will see how much the EOC changes this May with the new curriculum that is covered. The best part is how the curriculum gets students to see the world around them with a different, more mature, and more macro perspective. According to Nurse, what a time to learn this stuff too, during a viral pandemic. The relevance to the real-world problems we are seeing now, and will continue to see in the future, is undeniable. The class plans to continue this way for the foreseeable future. And now we go over to Kobe Estrada with sports. Good morning and welcome to this Friday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Kobe Estrada. Breaking news in the high school sports world is yesterday, the state of California announced that all indoor sports will be allowed to begin statewide as soon as Friday. We go to Jackson Hooker with more on the story. Yesterday, the state of California announced that the CIF will be allowing all indoor sports to begin as soon as today. All those sports like basketball, volleyball, and wrestling will only be able to start if there are less than 14 COVID cases per 100,000 residents in Placer County. Placer is currently floating around six cases per 100,000. Senior basketball player Salem Safi believed the news was fake as rumors were spread around early, although was excited once he heard it was true. <laughs> At first I was really surprised. I didn't even believe it at first, but now it's, I mean, it's amazing, but I was extremely surprised. After not having a high school season since March of last year, the basketball team has been playing together as of recent. Sophie thinks conditioning won't affect the team. I mean, of course, conditioning is going to be important and going over plays and everything, but I think overall we'll be able to do it, especially since the last couple of weeks we've been getting in some practices together. Junior Julia Wright is excited to hear the news of being able to start after such a belated begin date. So I'm excited for the season to start. I didn't think we were going to have a season because it's kind of really late into the school year. And in other sports news, football will no longer need to do their weekly COVID testing if Placer County is in the red tier. For more on that story, tune into next Tuesday's edition of EOTSN. And that's all on your home for Roseville High School Sports, top place breakdowns, and more. I have the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Kobe. The finale of Marvel's first TV show was released this morning. This is a nine-episode series following the Vision and Wanda Maximoff post-Endgame. This series is the building blocks for the Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and set a precedent for the upcoming Marvel TV shows, including Loki and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. As a standalone series, WandaVision may fall flat for viewers that are not familiar with the MCU. As a Marvel fan, this show is a great watch and exceeds expectations. And now we go back to news. Roseville and Wood Creek have put together a TikTok challenge against each other. Students can use their school's hashtag to submit a video for a chance to win a gift card. Um, so basically we collaborated with like Wood Creek student government to put on like a whole um, challenge between Wood Creek and Roseville and there's like a hashtag for Wood Creek to use and a hashtag for kids at Roseville to use and uh, anyone can just post whatever video they want and uh, however many views that they get that'll be added to like the total views for the hashtag. And basically, um, on each hashtag, the views will be counted, and whoever, whichever hashtag has the most, Wood Creek or Roseville, that school wins. There's like, a, you have to post like on like the winning school or the losing school has to post on their Instagram a picture in the other school's like gear saying, uh, like go to the other school. If you want to participate, uh, just whatever, like you can literally post anything as long as it adds views, like it'll help. So. 
uh, just try to post like some good content that'll get a lot of views and there you go. And that's it for us today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on at eyethetigernews.com. See you next time.